Welcome. You're watching Save the Semi-Quincentennial, America at 250. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons as it helps our channel grow. And I'm Dave Balog. I am the author and creator of the Dana Source Book of Brain Science. I've been a science editor for years and a history uh, aficionado and uh, political with a political interest and I graduated from Hamilton College with a degree in history and today we are going to look at Marie Louise Botano Baldwin one of the earliest and fiercest advocates for the Native American and for women's right to vote she was born of the Ojibwe Chip Chippewa Nation in North Dakota. Well, it's often lost to history that indigenous people lived in North America for millennia before the arrival of Europeans. By the end of the 20th century, most scholars estimated a population of around 50 million, with some historians arguing for an estimate of 100 million or more Native Americans in North America. Well, the history of Native American treatment in the United States is one of betrayal, broken treaties, seizure of tribal lands, and genocide. The Trail of, he of Tears, depicted here, was a series of forced relocations from 1831 to 1877 by the federal government of approximately 60,000 Native Americans from their ancestral lands in the southeast to areas west of the Mississippi. Affected peoples included the Cherokee, Chickasaw, and Muscogee Creek nations. Thousands died on forced marches, mostly to the Oklahoma Territory. Well, as colonists pushed westward, they became a threat to Native Americans' way of life. The American bison sustained indigenous people and played a key role in the ecological chain that kept the land verdant. At the end of the 18th century, the American buffalo population numbered around 60 million, with herds roaming freely across North America. In less than a century, a sequence of devastating events quickly brought the buffalo to near extinction. Their numbers went from millions to tens of thousands, and, on, and then by 1889, there were only a few hundred left. Some tribes of North America were very helpful to early European settlers in their new settlements. In 1744, colonial envoys from, uh, including delegates, uh, met with the Sachems, as they were called, of the Six Nations of the Iroquois Indians. During the, the, the discussions, the Iroquois leader, Canasatego, Canasatego, excuse me, advocated the Federal Union of the American Colonies, exhorting the colonists that the Iroquois Confederacy had been a functioning democracy for centuries. Sometime between 1000 and 1450, the Cayuga, Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, and Seneca nations came together to become the Iroquois Confederacy. And in the early 18th century, they were joined by the Tuscaroras, the, Confeder the Confederacy called itself the Howden Osani, or People's Building, a longhouse. Today, many people believe the Iroquois ideas of unity, federalism, and balance of power directly influence the United States system of government. During the, the debates over the plan for Union of the colonies, 
Benjamin Franklin pointed to the strength of the Iroquois Confederacy and stressed the fact that the individual nations of the Confederacy maintained internal sovereignty, managing their own internal affairs without outside interference. When Franklin published his short hints toward a scheme for uniting the northern colonies, his Albany Plan, it proposed that each colony could govern its own internal affairs. And many of the ideas from the Albany Plan and from the Iroquois Nation can be found today in the United States Constitution. Mary Louise, Marie Louise Bontno Baldwin was born in 1863, part of the Turtle Mountain tribe in North Dakota. She was educated in Minnesota schools and later attended St. John's Ladies College in Canada. In the 1890s, she traveled to Washington, D.C. to defend the treaty rights of Native people before Congress. She became the first Native American to hold a federal government position when President Theodore Roosevelt appointed her to the Office of Indian Affairs. After initially supporting the assimilation of Native Americans into the white man's culture, as was federal policy, Baldwin came to embrace her Native identity. She wore her tribal dress and braids for her federal employee identification photo, photo, a radical act at the time. In 1911, Baldwin became a key spokesman for, the Native, Amer for Native American women. She was a strong advocate for women's suffrage. Bottineau Baldwin prided herself in educating the public about indigenous heritage, including in relation to women's rights. Reporters covering the suffrage movement asked her about the traditional political roles of women in Native society. In response, she laughed and said, did you ever know that the Indian women were among the first suffragists? Well, despite the passage of the Indian Citizenship Act of 1924, many Native Americans living on res reservations continued to be excluded from voting. In 1948, Native Americans in Mexico and Arizona went to court and won their right to vote. Wyoming and other Western states were early to recognize and allow women to vote, but that right did not extend to Native American women. Utah and North Dakota became the last states to give on reservation Native Americans the right to vote in 1957 and 1958. But not all states allowed Native Americans to vote. Some could not vote until well into the second half of the 20th century. To ensure and protect the Native American vote, the Native American Voting Rights Act, NAVRA, was introduced in Congress in 2021. It did not pass, but supporters continue to work to gain passage of NAVRA. Well, we hope that this whets your appetite for more information. You can learn more about Marie Botano Baldwin in our books, 20 Who Made America Great and 20 More Great Americans. To get a, pre, a free preview of these books, start reading them for free. Immediately follow the links in the description below this video. And to do that, you have to click, it's a little tricky, you have to click the word more. Um, YouTube doesn't make it easy, let's say. But also you'll find a link to the um, League for Women Voters. We need everyone to vote, register to vote. Get your family and friends to register to vote. It's critical. Democracy is on the line. So thank you for watching. Again, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We appreciate your time. I'm Dave Balog.
be well, be kind, be involved.